Welcome back to Christian Symbolism in the Zodiac, Part 4. In this video, we will cover scriptures and related symbolism in the constellations Pisces, Aries, and Taurus. If you missed my previous videos, I recommend checking those out. The introduction has some additional scriptures as well as an introduction to this topic. Without any further ado, let's jump into it. Pisces is Latin plural for fish. As we've already established, the fish is a common Christian symbol, but there's a little bit more to unpack here. One connection that I mentioned in another video about Pisces includes the story of Christ's disciples miraculously catching a great multitude of fish. Luke tells the story well. Luke 5 verse 3 to verse 6 says, And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. What I like about this story is that this specific miracle happens twice, just like there are two fish in Pisces. The first time happened just before Christ called Peter, James, and John to the ministry, and the miracle occurs a second time after Christ's resurrection. Again in John 21, they go fishing and catch nothing until Christ calls from the shore for them to cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. In short, the two fish in Pisces remind me of Christ's ability to continue to perform miracles throughout our lives as we obey his commandments and follow his example. There's another connection too, which relates to the bands that are usually depicted tying the two fish together. If you look on a star map such as Stellarium, you'll find that the fish's bands appear to be tied to the constellation Cetus, which represents a sea monster. Many scriptures refer to death and sin as bands that take us captive, but can only be broken by Christ. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion, Isaiah 58, verse 6. And behold, the bands of death shall be broken, and the sun reigneth, and hath power over the dead. Therefore he bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead. Mosiah 15, verse 20, from the Book of Mormon. Those are the main scriptures that I have found that I remember when I look at the constellation Pisces. That is a perfect segue to Aries, which is Latin for ram, and is depicted in the sky next to Pisces with his metaphorical foot breaking the bands that tie the church, or the fishes, to the evil sea monster Cetus. The deep ocean has long been symbolic of hell. But Christ, the Lamb of God, has loosened the bands of death and hell through his atoning sacrifice. See Alma 7 verse 12. The ram is another traditional sacrificial animal in the Bible. My favorite story of a ram comes from Genesis 22. After Abraham proves his obedience to God's command to sacrifice his only son, God sends down an angel to stay his hand. Then, Abraham instead offers a ram that appears nearby, foreshadowing the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. John 1, 29. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Genesis 22, verse 13. Isaiah 1 verse 18 has additional details about the Lamb of God. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Our sins, if washed in the blood of the Lamb, can be made white again like the wool of the ram. Interestingly, as one of my sources pointed out, Within Aries is a galaxy called NGC 1156 that looks vaguely like the fleece or even the piece of wool from a ram. 
Taurus, which is Latin for bull, was a little bit trickier for me to figure out. If you search for the word bull in scripture, there are only two references. However, if you search for the word ox, you can find a gold mine of symbolism. While bull and ox are clearly two different words, they are related both in etymology and biology. Ox and bull are two different names for bovine. In short, ox is an acceptable translation for Taurus. The key difference is in the purpose of the animal, which I'll discuss here. Let's start with some agricultural background for the ox. Oxen have been used in agriculture for a variety of purposes, including plowing, transport, threshing, and even grinding or milling grain. Particularly noteworthy was the use of oxen in biblical times to stomp or tread over wheat after the harvest. This threshing loosens the edible wheat from the inedible chaff to prepare it for milling. Consequently, the ox is a symbol of labor and strength. Essentially, an ox is a bull, but it's used strictly for agriculture. In scriptures, the disciples of Christ are those who labor with their might in the Lord's field. Their purpose, like the ox, is to separate the wheat from the chaff by preaching and inviting all to come into Christ, that we may be counted as wheat into the garner, rather than chaff to be burned up at Christ's coming with an unquenchable fire. See Matthew 3 verse 12. The analogy is laid out clearly in various scriptures. Here are a couple. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. 1 Timothy 5 verse 18. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron, and I will make thy hoofs brass, and thou shalt be in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. Micah 4 verse 13. Both scriptures use ox as imagery for working in the Lord's field. I think that's pretty close cool symbolism, but there's even more still. In the Old Testament, we can read about oxen used in King Solomon's temple. He had a large basin constructed of brass, which was set on the backs of 12 bronze oxen. See 2 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 3 through 6, and 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 40 and 44 through 46. Three oxen faced each cardinal direction, representing the 12 tribes of Israel, which God said were to bless the whole earth. Genesis 26 verse 4, In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And tied in with Christ's command to his apostles to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Mark 16, verse 15 through 16. The sea, or fountain, on the oxen's back in Solomon's temple gives us a connection to baptism, which is the gateway or entrance into Christ's church. Interestingly, in the wild, oxen exhibit a defensive behavior where they encircle their young with their faces towards the enemy in the presence of predators. This would look very similar to how the 12 bronze oxen are arrayed in Solomon's temple. Likewise, the church and our relationships there can help protect us from the world and its influences. In short, God's work rests on the back of his disciples who gather the people, separating the wheat from the chaff, inviting all to be baptized so they can be protected from the day of burning. The ox then represents Christ's disciples who are yoked together with him. See Matthew 11 verse 30. And finally, I want to add that in the constellation Taurus, near where you might imagine the ox's back to be, we find the Pleiades star cluster, also called the Seven Sisters. The number seven appears in the book of Revelation and relates to, or symbolizes, Christ's church, as well as perfection. It also reminds me of the fountain on the oxen's back in Solomon's temple. That brings us to Gemini, but we'll leave that for the next video. I hope that you found this interesting and that you may have learned something. I'll provide some study resources and the scriptures in the description below. Please have a good day and as always, remember to smile.